Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. That's right, it's monthly Q&A time. We've got great questions this month, but what else? The GPU market, our price is gonna continue to go down or they're gonna level off. Should you buy something now or should you wait for the next generation? We're gonna go through all of that, of course. What about if you wanna build a PC? Should you be thinking about building now or waiting for Ryzen 7000? And what the heck are you gonna have to invest to build a Ryzen 7000 system? What you doing, Mr. Bear? If you get value of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key, and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code, and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Okay, what else are we gonna start with? Of course, the graphics card market. Let's take a look. Now we've got tons of questions. Let's break these down. I wanna take the first questions from like Dennis and Amanga and others who are basically asking, what about the current crop of GPUs? Prices have come all the way down about 50% from where they were. Is it time to buy or should we be still waiting for these GPUs to go even further? We'll talk about the new cards in the next generation coming. Well, I think it's, it's pretty simple. Th these cards actually do have a cost to manufacture. They actually do need to make a profit on these. Now look, they've already made a ton of profit on the ones that they sold us during the crisis. Mostly they sold those to crypto miners. That's what we're finding out right now because crypto mining is in the toilet right now. It's going away. Profits are way down and the end of GPU mining is coming with Ethereum moving to proof of stake. So what we're seeing now is that the actual demand from gamers was much, much lower than anybody really thought. So so we'll get into that when we talk about the next generation cards and pricing. It's very, very interesting. Overall though, I think, yeah, the cards that I'm looking at, like the 6600, the 6650 XT that just came out uh, for $399, interestingly enough, that $20 higher MSRP is forcing all the 6600 XT cards to go underneath that had been uh, a little too high. So in, in fact, raising the MSRP in this particular weird circumstance seems to have the opposite effect where we're seeing now more cards at a lower cost because they can't compete with the 6650 XT and the 6600 XT. So that's interesting. On the other hand, NVIDIA has quite a ways to go to lower their costs. We know they're trying to squeeze every last nickel out of gamers out there. They know that there's a lot of gamers out there that are just going to buy it because it says NVIDIA on it, just because it says RTX on it. And so they'll sell these cards at a cost that's really ridiculous. In fact, some of those prices for those NVIDIA cards um, at the lower level were actually raised within the last week, which I find kind of shocking. Uh, the, the, especially the 3060 model, uh, it's an EVGA model that was 380 was raised up to $429. And I was just really kind of blown away by that. So I'm just saying that I think the cards are reaching equilibrium right now in terms of this current generation and Nvidia and AMD are starting to pivot away, getting ready for the next generation. That being said, this is what we have here. I don't know if they're gonna go much lower uh, on the AMD side. Nvidia, they might come down a little bit. One thing I will add to the whole, should you buy the current generation GPUs now, is that if you are willing to buy a used GPU, you know, sometime in the fall, that actually might not be a bad time. However, I know, I, re I realize I'm asking you to wait like another four months, and that's just too long for some people. But we are gonna see Ethereum move to proof of stake, uh, sometime in that venue, and we'll see a lot of miners just start to dump their cards. That being said, that in itself could continue to get delayed. This was supposed to happen by June. It's now where I'm thinking more like uh, August or September. And remember, some of those miners are gonna hold on to the very last minute that they can mine, and then they'll have to clean the cards, and then they'll have to put them up on eBay. There'll be a lag, and then some of them are like, oh, I'm gonna hope another coin rises. So there's gonna be a lag there. It's not something I would set my watch by or necessarily wait for, but it is gonna be a phenomenon that's gonna happen and probably right around the time that AMD and Nvidia are getting ready to launch their next generation cards. But what about waiting for the next generation of GPUs? Shindo and others ask, isn't that a better idea with new cards coming at the end of the year? Should you build now or should you wait? And 
on top of that, I also wanna just add in, what if you're just looking to upgrade your GPU, not necessarily build a new PC? Okay, let's start off with new PC builders. Let's take a big zoom back, big zoom back here. How do these launches typically go? Usually we get the flagship products, that's like the RTX 4070 and RTX 4080, and then like a month or so later, we get the Halo product, right? That's the super expensive one. That'll be the like the RTX 4090. We'll just stick with Nvidia here for as an example. There'll be another couple months and we'll get like the 4060 Ti or however they decide to segment the next series. And then we'll wait another couple of months after that and then we'll they'll announce the 4060. And of course, things will sell out immediately and you'll have to go slug it out for them and you probably won't have enough stock and there'll probably be more demand next generation than there was this generation from gamers. Let's set crypto miners aside. So if you're looking to build a system now, you know, Ryzen 7000 CPUs, they're gonna need DDR5 memory. It's more expensive. The boards will probably be brand new. They're gonna be more expensive. And honestly, the CPUs we have right now are very, 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 very fast. We need the GPUs to catch up to the CPUs. It, it was, it had been the other way around for a little while, but the CPUs have leaped forward so much. Now we are expecting that next generation. We're expecting 80 to 120% performance. If all these leaks are to be believed and take it all with a grain of salt, someone will be wrong, someone will be right, some will be way off. So I would go ahead and build now. If you've been waiting especially, build now. I wouldn't even think about it. If you're at the ultra high end, yeah, I would go ahead and wait. But everybody else, I'd probably build now mid-range and below. If you're looking to just go ahead and upgrade your current thing, I, I might wait. I would wait to, to closer to the end of the year unless you got like a, you know, GTX 750 Ti that's just like on its last absolute legs. And then yeah, go ahead and buy something like a, an RX 6600 right now. You can get one for for not that bad a price. And then, you know, look, eight, nine months from uh, from now, you could look to pick up something else. But I wouldn't wait at the, at the mid and low ends right now. Let's talk a little bit about next-gen GPU pricing, because I know it's weighing really heavily on people's minds. They're like, oh my gosh, prices have become so expensive. I used to feel like I was a mid-range buyer, and now I'm, I feel like I'm a budget buyer, and I feel like I'm getting priced out entirely. What am I gonna do, let alone budget buyers who just feel like they're completely on the side of the road at this point? I've got what I think is very good news. Again, totally my opinion, but looking at the actual data for GPU prices, it's very clear almost all of the demand that radically increased prices this generation was from cryptocurrency mining and 98% of that is Ethereum mining and Ethereum mining is going away. Ethereum mining is going away. GPU mining is going away. Well, what if once Ethereum goes to proof of stake, won't some other coin take its place? No. All the other coins out there that currently are mined with GPUs are tiny. They've always been tiny. They're gonna stay tiny because nobody wants to heavily invest in a currency that uses that much power that is at risk of being banned because of how much power it's so environmentally unsustainable out there. Nobody likes those cryptocurrencies and the only ones that were mined with GPUs that got to that size were Ethereum before these concerns really became kind of a thing. And Ethereum moving away from it, that's gonna be the end of GPU mining as we know it. So we're not gonna see the same pressures on the market that we saw. In fact, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a flood of used GPUs come in as those Ethereum miners get forced to sell off all their GPUs because there's nothing to mine and even turning their rig on is gonna cost the money as opposed to generating the money. So they're not gonna to wanna to do that. They're gonna to wanna to recoup their investment from those graphics cards. We're gonna see a huge flood of GPUs hit the used market just when AMD and NVIDIA are launching their, their RX you know, 6000 series and the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series cards. So I think they're gonna to have to price those cards more aggressively than they than they did this generation for sure. It's gonna look a lot more like 2018, 2019 than 2021. That is really good news. And Intel is waiting the market. Yes, their launch is a dumpster fire. They'll get there eventually. I have a lot to say about how badly they've botched the Intel Alchemist launch. But listen, they're a big company. This There's a lot of momentum, a lot of money behind this. They will eventually get launched and they will eventually compete at the lower end. I think there's actually gonna be quite a scrum at the lower end, which should drive some prices down. So all that's gonna to meld together, I think, in the next generation to see some more reasonable kind of prices 
and have some of those MSRPs not be as BS as they were in this generation. So I hope that's a little bit of good news for folks. All right, Kings asked, if you are gonna buy a high-end GPU right now, which one should you get? And then we've got a lot of folks asking, what about the massive amount of power that the new GPUs coming next year or at the end of this year, the next generation, how much power are they gonna draw? And should we be upscaling our PSUs, just getting ready for them if we're building something now? Here's the simple answer on the high-end GPUs that I would be buying right now if you don't wanna wait. 38 80, 12 gigabyte looks like a really good value right now. I would go with a 12 gigabyte if you can over the 10 gigabyte, unless you're spending like a couple hundred dollars extra. If you're getting close to the cost of a 6900 XT or a 6950 XT, which just came out, then get the 6950 XT. That just seems to make more sense. I would look at either a 6900, 6950 XT, a 6900 XT, or an RTX 3080 at the high end. Probably skip the 3090 altogether, just too expensive, not enough performance. Skip the 3080 Ti, same kind of same kind of deal with that. Skip the 6800 XT, unless those cards come down significantly more in price. In terms of should you be scaling up your PSU if you're building something? Yeah, if you're gonna build at the high end and you're gonna get a high end GPU next generation, then yeah, I would probably start padding my PSU. Now, typically I recommend you take the max draw on it, you go 1.5 times that, and that's the PSU you get. Now, when you start getting up to really high voltages, that modifier can come down a little bit to like 1.4. You know, it starts to get a little crazy, right? And you start to demand huge amounts of PSUs, especially if you've got something like an i9 12900K. That already yeah, has a huge power draw. How are you then? I mean, people are going to start blowing the fuses in their houses when they plug these rigs in. It's going to be crazy. So, yeah, I would start thinking about sizing up that uh, PSU even more if you're considering buying at the higher end next year. All right. Janice and EP main got great questions. What about CPU GPU bottlenecks? What about the best CPU GPU combos? And do you need to pair like an AMD GPU with an AMD CPU? Let's just jump into that. First of all, let's take on bottlenecks. I talk a little bit about this in our PC Parts Explained 2022 video, so definitely check that out. In fact, I'll have a whole section in there just on CPU GPU combo, so I won't spend too much time on that. But let's talk about the genesis of that, which is the bottleneck issue. If you're building a gaming PC, now production PCs are different, and it really depends on what kind of production workloads you are doing out there. Some are entirely CPU dependent, some are CPU and GPU together, some are very, very much on the GPU, but let's stick with gaming because that's an easier use case. For gaming, most of the load needs to be on that GPU. It's gonna, that's where your FPS is gonna come from, your GPU. So you need to get the biggest GPU that you can afford, and then you want a CPU that's not gonna bottleneck that GPU. So I would think about, especially this generation, CPUs are so fast. Like take something like the i3-12100F. And by the way, let me know down in the comments, would you like us to do a video on the i3-12100F, like best motherboards, memory, like we do with other parts, kind of walk you through everything, because I think that is a really phenomenal part for like $108 right now. So take that CPU, i3-12100F, I would take that all the way up to 6700 XT. And I would take a 5600 or an i5-12100F, 12400F all the way up to like an RTX 3080 before I thought about jumping up the CPU because they are that fast. They You will get a lot of the performance out of it. For the 5600, I might sneak in a 5600X instead if I didn't feel comfortable overclocking it myself. You'll get a little bit more performance that way, especially with a big GPU like a 3070 Ti or something like that. And then of course you jump up to the big CPU, bigger CPUs and that's the i5-12600K, i7-12700 uh, non-K, or the 5700X. Those are the ones that I would be looking at on the AMD side if you were gonna go uh, up a little higher than that in order to get just a little bit more performance. And with a 5800X3D would be my go-to if I was putting in a 6900XT, a 6950XT, an RTX 3090, a 3080 Ti, because I also know that that CPU is gonna be faster in future generations. Right now, the difference is about 10, 15%, but that difference will grow over time. We know that. Uh, this is the way it always works. So that CPU will last me a little bit longer, and I wouldn't mind the investment if you're buying a 3090. So that's how I would think about CPU, GPU combos. And of course, in terms of should you buy AMD, GPUs, there's some very small benefit to it. I don't really think it's enough to influence my CPU choice or my GPU choice, though. We've got a really interesting question. Also got a massive amount of upvotes from K Tony Vol. 
enjoy this, especially for first time builders and those on a budget. What parts can you go cheap on and what parts should you not cheap out on basically? Uh, I'm gonna combine this too with the uh, Girl Gaming ass. What about a processor for five years? i5 12600K, is it gonna survive five years? What about GPUs? Uh, and Lloyd Aaron kind of asked something similar in terms of future proofing. In terms of quality of components, the things that I would always spend most of my budget on if you're gaming is the GPU. The second thing I'm gonna spend most of my money is the CPU, but I'm gonna spend like half my budget on that GPU. The things I'm gonna to start to cheap out on first, I'm gonna to start to cheap out on storage speed. It doesn't really matter to me if I'm just gaming, if I get a PCIe uh, Gen 3 super budget drive, or if I get like a super fast Gen 4 drive, what am I gonna wait? Like an extra 20 seconds or an extra couple minutes if I'm uploading a game every couple of months? What are some of the other things? You know, the motherboard, uh, I can see starting to cut down on, but if you think about it, like things have to be at a certain level. Uh, you have to meet a certain minimum requirements. And it's really about, once you meet those minimum requirements, how much is it worth it to you to jump up whatever the next perceived tier is? Power supplies are one. Uh, I typically say get at least a C-rated power supply on the PSU Cultus list or higher. And that's just basically a list making sure that it's got the proper protections, that the voltage ripple isn't bad, that they're basically you're buying a, a quality unit that's not gonna explode on you, right? But then you think about, well, it's just, does it need to be modular or semi-modular? Do I need extra connectors or things like, th those kind of things are something I would think about secondarily. And I would only jump back to them if I was spending more money on my overall system and I ha had a little bit of money to spend there once we met those basic requirements. Same with the PC case and airflow, you wanna at least meet the requirements, and then I'll think about jumping up. RGB, as long as I'm meeting my certain requirements, yeah, I'll spend a little bit a little bit extra to get RGB. Those are the kinds of things that I think about. In terms of the memory speed, that's another, memory speed hasn't really impacted uh, performance that much. Another thing that I might shave some on, or the total capacity, that's how I would approach that. And in terms of future-proofing, remember upgrade path and future-proofing are different things. Upgrade Upgrade path just means, can I continue to improve my PC's performance? The basic upgrade path for any PC is putting in a new graphics card. Um, so that's generally your upgrade path. When we talk about future-proofing, that's spending money now as some kind of insurance policy that your PC will last longer. I find future-proofing to be a fool's errand. More often than not, I think that it costs people current performance because they're often trying to future-proof things that aren't really that important and frankly don't turn out to be important. I see that Gen 4 drives, people think X570 somehow future-proofs, and they just end up you know, spending and, and kind of, you know, getting rid of all this money uh, into future proofing when they could have gotten a better GPU, a better CPU, you know, uh, faster memory, something that would improve performance today. So I would just say, stay away from future proofing as much as you can, buy what you now, for now, and listen, that PC should still be rocking in 10 years. It's just not gonna be the bleeding edge PC anymore. It's gonna be a 10 year old PC. Thank you for joining us on this month's Q&A. Let me know down in the comments, what questions should we have answered that we missed? And of course, remember, if you get value of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. And if you missed it, we just released a really cool video, how to figure out what is the right GPU for you. We go through all the current GPUs, all the features. How do you make that decision? Check it out right here. Best GPU for gaming 2022. And we'll catch you on the next one.